Good evening. Welcome to the uh, June 15th, uh, 2015 meeting of the Open Space Committee. Um, I, this meeting is being broadcast live and will be taped for rebroadcast, so I need to ask if anyone else in the audience is recording the meeting. Okay, that being the case, um, for those of you, I think everybody knows each other here, but we do have some folks in the audience, so I'm Ann Weston, I'm the chair, so I'm just going to go around the, t around the table and have everyone introduce themselves, please. Eric Lesperance, Assistant Town Planner. Louise Downey, Vice Chair. Uh, Mark Benal. Al Colosso, member of the Space Committee. John Anderson. Okay. Um, the goals and the, um, and the purpose of our committee. The purpose of our committee, I think everyone knows, is to look at the open space, the town-owned open space in the community, to determine what the best uses of it might be. Um, the priority right now is the South Old Road property um, that we just recently acquired because um, there are deadlines on the time that the selectmen have to decide on how to rebond the property. I believe the deadline, the, the existing bonds expire September 15th. So they're looking to us for recommendations by the end of July, the August 10th selectmen's meeting at the very latest from what I was told. Um, so clearly, you know, our, our, um, we're pretty, we're pretty tight here on time. So clearly we've got a lot to do in the next six weeks, four to six weeks. So that basically is the um, premise of our goal here. Um, I knew there, I know there are some folks in the audience, so um, we do have a public comment item now. We also have one later in the agenda as well. So um, if any of you folks that are in our audience would like to make any comment, um, I'd be happy to take that at this time, if there's anything else. Um, Can we just have name and address for the record, sure. please? Can I come up to the table? Um, sure. Sure, yeah, there's space up here. My name is Kevin Maher. I live at uh, Fort Stonebridge Drive. Uh, I have bought and I live in the neighborhood. Uh, and I've been kind of following following uh, along what's been going on. And as somebody who lives in the area, uh, I've never made a statement what we should do with the property, other than we, I think we need some recreation. Uh, but there's other alternatives. And what I'm concerned about, that this committee is under terrible pressure and will be in a very bad position. You have, 45 to 50 days, basically, do a job that should take longer. The selectmen can do a one-year extension on temporary funding, uh, according to the town accountant at the last meeting, mm -hmm. and maybe give you more time. And why do you need more time? Uh, and I'd just like to walk you through some things that I think you should consider. Uh, I have a little handout here. Pass that around. Got a mark. There you go. Uh, I think when the town acquired the property, they did so to protect the town's interest because uh, they didn't care for the development, but they also wanted to create. Uh, something in this town. There's all divergent opinions. Uh, and I almost hate to tell you folks, you're not just the Open Space Committee. You have been turned into real estate developers. I know a lot of you probably don't want that function, but that's what you are. Because you've been given an asset. And you've been saying, how should we develop it? I am a real estate developer, but I do it for profit. You are a real estate developer looking out for the interest of the community. You obviously have a different rule book. But I think it's incumbent on this panel when the town acquired the property. Uh, and the selectmen gave you the responsibility to develop a game plan that the town meeting to spend almost three million bucks would kind of expect a thorough review of the property. At the town meeting, I heard people say, Sola, <coughs> We ought to look at solar, we ought to look at housing, uh, we ought to look at uh, uh, 
parks. I've heard people say even expanding out of the golf course into it. Mm -hmm. So I think what this committee needs to do, in my opinion, is take the year. Because I think you've got a tremendous amount of work to really get your minds around what you're doing. I do this for a living. If you walked to my office tomorrow morning and said, I have this parcel of land, Kevin, and I want to know what to do with it, and I want you to do the full boat deal, as if you're a buyer, Kevin, it would take me 30 to 60 days as my job, not a part-time committee, someone who has access to lawyers, wetland specialists, civil engineers, design specialists, that's what you're going to have to go through. Because people are going to ask you, why didn't you consider such and such? And that's what you want to try to avoid as a committee. Why didn't you consider this, this, or this? I don't think that's my car. <laughs> so I just want to give you a, what I call a light outline that you may want to look at. I just want to make a, one little point, Kevin, sure. just so you know. Um, we don't we don't have to decide every detail of what's going to happen with the property mm -hmm. by August 10th. We have to decide whether we want to recommend to the selectmen that we retain all of the property for municipal use, mm -hmm. or some of it for municipal, some of it for public, mm -hmm. for private use rather, right. or mm -hmm. some variation thereof. Right. We don't have to come up with a detailed road plan, if you will, mm -hmm. um, you know, with every T crossed and every I dotted. Oh, I understand that. Okay. I understand that. I, I, I'll say there was an admirable idea to put senior housing here and put the rest into uh, open space or active mm -hmm. recreation. It's a wonderful idea. Maybe that's where the panel will go someday. Or maybe it'll want to keep it all recreational. Mm -hmm. But I think in order for you to even allocate a piece of this land, you have to do some significant due diligence. The very first question is say, we're going to take this pot, put 10 acres here, and set it aside. I would assume, as any developer would, you would look at the physical characteristics of the land. Mm -hmm. You would look at the accessibility utilities, the topographical conditions, on and on, the soil conditions. All these things that should be considered if you even do a breakup that way. I mean, I think you have to consider a whole laundry list of other items that people have been talking about in this community that they would like to see happen there. I mean, you got 42 ideas, and you're gonna come up with one or two. Should we do solar? Should we connect it to the Pappas Recreation Center with a 17-foot access point? I don't 12, know. 12 foot. 12 foot, thank you. Uh, should we do residential development and sell off some of the lots to recapture funding? I'm not a fan of that, uh, but you know, you're allowed to do that there. Uh, these are the things that People are going to ask, did you look at this? And if you sit here and say, no, we took this for private and we took this for recreation, I think you just shut yourself into, you shut everything else off. So in order to look at this property and look at all these different options, you have to look at the property. You should talk to related town boards, planning board, conservation, board of appeals in case it involves a zone change. Uh, and then you ought to do some due diligence on how you allocate. Are you going to do 10 acres, 12 acres, 16 acres? What's the basis for your decision making? All these sort of things. And I, I think almost you ought to go in terms of transparency into the citizens of this town and say, folks, this is what we're recommending and hold public hearings on this. I think to try to perform this by the middle of August, you're really putting yourself in a terrible bind and at the same time putting the town in a bind. This is the smart way, non-judgmental, I'm just giving you ideas and a procedure that you as real estate developers should follow. I know, Mrs. Uh, Madam Chairman, you do not look that term for being called a real estate developer, <laughs> no. but you are right now. Uh, unfortunately, you don't like that, but that's the real world we're in. There are tons of people in this community you can reach out to. And I'm not one of them because I'm in a butter and everybody's going to question why. But there are people like uh, who own construction businesses, there are soil scientists, there are professional engineers that could give you a wealth of information mm -hmm. that you don't have. So 
I just think a timely review would be good. You might want to consider talking to the selectmen if you think that's reasonable. And say, look, we know you can extend the funding for a one-year period. And then come up with a good comp comprehensive plan for the town. There is a cost associated, though, with, with that, doing that. There is. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be far better than making a, rushing into a decision, making a bad decision. I, I'll give you a perfect example, a hypothetical. I think senior housing down there would be wonderful. Uh, I'm 62 years old, so I think about that generation. I, I own a real estate company in town. I sell a lot of homes to senior people. But maybe it's not the best place. I'll give you an example why. The hill. The hill is one. Let's say you put a passive recreation center in there. Walking trails, bike trails. Wonderful idea. And you sit there and say, do I have to spend $1.4 million on Curtis Street if it's going to be passive? It's not going to get the same amount of traffic as Pappas does. So maybe you don't have to spend $1.4 million to get there. You put a senior project in there, you may have to. So let me ask you this question. If you went out and find, find a piece of land in town, and I'm going to tell you folks, there's a whole bunch of them, where you could spend four or five hundred thousand dollars and buy it and put a nice senior project there, you just saved the town a million dollars. So these are the types of things I think this panel has to work through. I don't know if that's what's going to happen, but you could blow a million dollars by a bad decision in 60 days. Or you do realize that we're only advisory. We make by all means. We don't make the decision. Of course not. Okay. But you have to advise them. Say, you know, folks, we need a year to do this right. And by doing that, we may save you money. Because if you, it, I just hate to see you get in a trap and have a bad decision. Uh, I would love to personally. I haven't really come out setting, but I'd like to see some sort of residential, active recreation component there. I think the town's got to get something for its three million bucks. Uh, so let's let's do it right. I don't know if you have any questions about real estate development that you are, from someone who does it for a living. Well, what would you like to see there, Kevin? I would like to see some. You know, I, I was I was watching the selectmen's meeting. I, I would love to see some sort of increased senior housing. I, I think that's a component in this community. I don't know if that's a wise financial decision. It's a beautiful piece of property. I've gone down there. Uh, I should say I have trespassed. My dog escapes, and that's where he goes, and the other one follows. And I'm running in the fields of the town trying to get him back. Uh, it's beautiful land. I would like to see some sort of public access use for walking trails, bike trails. I would even love to see a place where the kids could go and slide in the winter. I don't know if it's good. There, but the side of the hill over by my property is wonderful land for a slide. Those are the types of things. I mean, I'm moving from number four to number two. I'm going to live in the area, and uh, my grandkids will be getting the benefits of this property, hopefully. Uh, so that's kind of it's some, something along that nature. <coughs> if it's the right financial decision for the town, uh, I was very involved in the getting the town to buy it, as you well know. I never came out and said, take the million bucks. I wanted the town to control it. And that was a smart move, so. You think not taking the million was a smart move? Excellent. Well, yeah. Hands would be tied big time. Yeah. You, you, put, you know, give them $2 million away, you can't, you have no control. Mm -hmm. I do have a fear, though, <coughs> this property is, and you want to know this, Madam Chairperson, wetlands, there are wetlands in there, I know. an invasive species. And I haven't heard, maybe there is, a game plan there to maintain this property, okay? Because it could get in a point where all that comes back in and takes the property over. Nature does wonderful things. I know. And I've already, I've well, already I, vocalized my concern. Well, I hope that's more like you guys might say, hey, because one, one of the things I put out in March is two goals, short-term care and custody of the property, long-term, which you guys are doing. Uh, Can I ask you a question? You can ask me anything you okay, want. First of all, I, I really appreciate you being here. Yep. And I hope that as we progress through the summer, we get more people speaking up. Because mm -hmm. one of the problems in this community, and, and it's typical of communities, is yep. that 
decisions are made and then there's a lot of Monday morning, morning quarterbacking right. going on. We need ideas, we need input, and I, I really hope that the citizens of this community mm -hmm. will do that. Okay, and I, you know, I understand what you're saying and I agree with you for the most part. Yeah. Um, this is a great set of things to look at. Mm -hmm. um, I, we are under the gun, and unfortunately it's summer, and unfortunately, yeah. you know, there's some things that concern me deeply, but we'll deal with that, you yeah. know, later in the meeting, or tomorrow at the next meeting, but, um, you, you know, know, I would, I, I, I agree, I was sitting home one night, and one of my friends <clears throat> calls me and said, hey, you watching TV? I said, no, why, what's happening? All the selectmen are talking about, so, I, you know, I wish there was a better way, and you can sit there and say, well, we had a public hearing on it, well, yeah, you had a public hearing, but nobody knows about it, unless they're really focused and it's only about two or three hundred people mm -hmm. in Soul Town get really focused. I didn't even I don't watch Selectman every Monday. I did that. You, don't. I said, you should oh, yeah. I know. what's the matter with you? <laughs> I got home from work about seven, seven fifteen that night and I just didn't want to think about turning on the no, TV. I, I know what you're I know saying. what you're saying. I agree with you and I and I wish there were two two hundred people there. Well maybe not, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean I certainly the public hearings for the South Old Road purchase yeah. were very well attended and and yeah. th there was some great stuff, great points made and, and yeah. so forth. Uh, but I hope that people now that we own this property, that we can use it to the best advantages for all citizens of the yeah. town. That's I, that, that's, I agree with you. You know, it's a tax investment and it's a community investment. You know, I don't know, is it up to people like me to contact all my neighbors in the neighborhood? I'm not looking to do that. I mean, it, it gets to a point where it has a sense of taking on a pressure point. And I don't know if other people would even do that. It, you know, maybe it's good when it's quiet. It gives you time to think. I, I agree with you. I wish I had more input. But. Well, we can always appeal to uh, our friends at the press and the paper, the paper press also, yeah. to uh, put something in the newspaper. I mean, that'd probably be nice that people know about it. Yeah, that's a beautiful property, and I just want to make sure mm -hmm. it's my goal. Absolutely. Yes. Of course, yeah. you probably are aware, yeah. the selectmen, if you watched the last meeting, the selectmen have planned this public hearing on this property again. Yes, uh, I saw that. On the 29th. Right. 705, across the hall. 705, this building, I, know. I saw the it. Hall. I know, the Madam Chairperson. I'll be there. But you know what? I was one of the few watching it. You know, you're, it's crazy you ask summer months. That's the killer. But, you know, I'd almost hope that it's your job that you guys formulate a program and say this is what we want to do and via the selectmen discussing it and hold public hearing somewhere and really try to broadcast it. I mean anything I could do it I would help. But this is what we want to do folks. Any objections? And so people don't come back at you, Madam Chairperson, and say, why didn't you think about this? Well we did. We looked at it. They're all gonna be coming out of the woodwork, you know it. I know the word always. All right. Well, okay. thank you very much thank you. for your thank time. You. Thank you. Appreciate your input. Thank you. Um, we're still under public comment, so is there someone else? I'll just have your name and address for the record, please. Chuck Miller, 34 Arlington Street. I spoke at your last meeting, yeah. and I just want to get it on the record because this was your that was your first meeting. Um, I would love to see that area used as some kind of recreation, and I don't mean more fields, but bike trails, walking trails, hiking trails, even a dog park if, if such a thing were possible. Um, when you try to go bike riding or running in this town, you're constantly dodging cars no matter where you are in the town. Uh, traffic is an issue. I live off of Packachog Street, as you know, and there's a lot of rolling stop signs there. So it's a little dicey when you're riding your bike in there. I'd like to have a place where I can bring my grandchildren to ride their bikes or just take them on a walk. And that doesn't exist in Auburn uh, unless you walk on the sidewalks. You can't really ride bicycles on the sidewalks. You can't teach kids to ride it there. So I was going to be brief because I don't want to just say the same thing I said last week. But okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there someone else? Can you receive a letter? Oh, thanks. Would you receive a letter? A commit. Yep. Yeah. Um, today came in my email. And it's from Anita Shaw. I don't have her address. Um, she's a resident. It said, Dear Open Space Committee, as a lifelong resident of Auburn, active community volunteer, I'd love to propose the following two items to be submitted as public comment for the use of the South Pole land. 
My first suggestion is the establishment of a dog park in town, specifically in the South Hold Pappas area. This would be the optimal location as Pappas can accommodate the parking. I also think this will help alleviate issues that the town may have with dog owners bringing dogs to athletic fields. I've attached some materials regarding the establishment of a dog park for your consideration. And she did attach some project plan type ideas. Um, I can make copies of these for the committee if, if you all were interested. She said, secondly, a community farm or farm share program would be a great addition to the town. This could potentially create a revenue stream for the town since members of the community could join the farm share and pay to receive crops that are harvested. It would also be self-sustaining as those who join the farm share are obligated to volunteer a certain number of hours to work in the garden. I am unable to attend tonight's meeting as I have a newborn. I hope the two items above can be entertained as potential uses for South Hole land. Thank you for your consideration, Anita Shaw. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there, is there any other public comment at this time? Okay. All right. Um, relative to the South Old Road property itself, um, there was a lot of information that Ed Kastanovich shared last week at the selectors meeting with us relative to the funding issues. Mm -hmm. um, does everybody understand what the issues are? We have a pretty tight time frame here. Um, because the selectmen do have to make a decision by um, mid-September. So they're looking for our input before then, obviously. Mm -hmm. So does everybody, you know, I mean, I, I wrote like, I don't know, pages and pages of notes, but I think everybody understands we have public un and, and municipal uses and non-municipal uses. And I think Ed was pretty good about what constitutes a public use, including housing. It sounds like as long as the Inspector General agrees that there's an exemption that they need, um, and that would be considered a public use, and it would be a non-taxable use. So um, if you all understand the, tax, the, you know, the financial issues of it, um, I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page on that. Um, I guess... I know some, some of you have shared your opinions with me about what you think the property should be used for, but I'd like to go around the table and um, see what you all think. Louise, i just start with you. Do you have any thoughts right now? The use? Um. I'm not holding you to it, I'm just no, wanting really, to know. No, I actually, I, this um, Suggestion from this Miss Shaw here: the community farm or farm share would be a very good use for part of it. Um, again, remembering all, everything there is about the wetlands and and be having to work around that. Um, if it made sense to put public. Um, senior housing down there. I would like to be able to see some more senior housing in town if that was a good place for it, if we could make that work. But again, it all depends on location and what we have to do to make that work. And the walking trails and bicycle trails, I'm very much in favor of that because I'm, I live on Packetog Street too and I walk every day or try to and I know just what you're saying. So yeah, the walking and bike trails would be great. Alex? Walking trails, uh, any type of recreation, light recreational uh, activities. Um, <clears throat> what, what about, what's the option of not doing anything? I mean, you know. That's an option. In 50 years, you could do something with the land and it would still be there. Or in 10 years, or in five years, or next year. Is there any really uh, driving interest in having to do something with it now. Obviously the land has been there for many years, you know, before today. And uh, it's not going to ever be paying taxes, whatever it, uh, whatever the development is. And, uh, you know, it's possible that uh, I mean, there are plenty of other parcels in the town that are not being used at all. And, um, I don't know that it would hurt the property if it was undeveloped for a while. 
but uh, I guess there is an interest in going forward and doing something with it. And uh, just, I would like to see some type of trails and, you know, paths or something like that, but there is this option of not doing anything. Mm -hmm. well, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, I think Mr. Katanovich mentioned that we could um, not do anything with it at all for 10 years. Um, and then at the end, we could just bond it as keeping it for municipal use. Dan, please correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Bond it continuing for use as municipal. And then at the end of 10 years, then we would be free to make the decision on whether we wanted to continue for public or private use. Do I have that correct? Yep. Thank you. So that's definitely an option too. Mm -hmm. well, during that 10 years, anything you wanted to do, like trails or anything else, that's open. That's right. Not, you could do those that. Those uses are not closed to right. us. So, so we could still develop the, the bike trails, the walking trails, mm -hmm. hiking, that kind of thing, and not make any ch the changes for 10 years. I am concerned about, you know, Mr. Post um, had said that he mowed that property twice a year. I believe he said in April and July. Um, it hasn't been touched this season, and I'm kind of concerned about that because, as Mr. Maha pointed out, it doesn't take long for Mother Nature to take over. That used to be forest land. I don't know if you're aware of that, Eric, but it was forest land, mm -hmm. and he turned it into pasture land. So it was a change in agricultural use, but it still stayed within the 61A guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, but if, it, if it's something isn't done to maintain it, mm -hmm. it's going to revert to what it was. So, and believe me, it doesn't take that long. Mm -hmm. It'll be all brush in a season. One season. One so season. Like you I know. saw it happen in my backyard the year they didn't plant the corn. It was a mess. And then it makes it more difficult and more time consuming for them to try to get in there with the brush cutting equipment. Mm -hmm. It makes it more maintenance, you know, more, um, more labor more labor, more labor time mm -hmm. to take care of it. I mean, I think if we can get it cut before the end of the season, I think we should do that. Um, I'm just very concerned about it reverting to what it was. I can. I did speak to the town engineer because that was one of the major things when I walked the site uh, with Dave and uh, John was well, in the post, of course. They will be mowing it within the next couple of weeks. I did okay. speak to the DPW director, so that is something. But if that is, I did mention that when we first bought it about a maintenance plan. Um, yeah. It doesn't seem to have been formulated. So if that is something that the committee wants to recommend, I would suggest that that be part of your recommendation so yeah. that we can. And just, you know, just to reiterate, I, I know it was discussed at some of the fire meetings of the selectmen, but. Um, Mr. Carpenter sought advice from people who know about land, and he walked the property mm -hmm. with David DeLawless, the former chairman of the planning board, and with Dr. John Rockwood, who is a wetland scientist with Ecotech. Um, both at no cost to the community, I want to point out, um, just to get some idea from people who know about that kind of thing. So, um, you know, there are wetlands on site. Dr. Rockwood said that they were manageable. Um, you know, there are definitely areas where you can't it's going to be difficult, if not impossible, to work, but um, not nearly as bad as the Pappas Rex site is. Um, but anyways, you know, people, people who know have looked at the property, so not to say we couldn't do, use some more input, but, um, you know, it's just a lot to consider for all of us, really. But anyways, um, Alex, did you have anything else? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Mark? Um, if, you put, if, you, if you do, I, I like to see, like, Walking trails, but you gotta make sure that they're accessible for all disabilities. Yeah. And because Pappas Pap Haps is not. Um, also, like to see maybe a town pool, a spray park. A spray park? Not, yeah, a pool, a town pool, a spray park. See, we don't have any place to swim in town. Well, the so, water table's pretty high up there. It probably wouldn't take much. Right? You know, do you know? <laughs> Do you know how many acres are, are the site acres, uh, is wetlands? Is there acres? I don't know acres? off the top of my head. Okay. I don't know. I have we to. haven't had the formal survey. Yeah. They're going to have it. They're going to have a wetlands person um, evaluate the site. Right? Um. That, yeah, you know, my understanding is that that's part of the, the trail study. Mm -hmm. Is it a significant portion of the property? Wetlands? I, I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Not like, not like the property, not like the Pappas site.
I forgot about that trail study, Eric. You want to fill everybody in a little bit quickly on what that's about? Do you, have you been involved in that? Uh, I, Matt has been leading the charge on that, but Auburn is the latest uh, member of, I believe it's the Blackstone Heritage Corridor. Right. Um, I, so there was grant funding an, that an, came an, out of that, it wasn't there? Yeah. It, you know, as, as, as a national park, there's a certain level of grant funding and we applied, I believe it was 15,000, um, we received a grant award for a feasibility study for to connect a trail from the Pappas Recreational um, field, the complex over to this, um, the set of land that was purchased. So. That will include wetlands analysis, um, from from what I understand. And that will be funded through that grant money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mark, anything else? That's it. Okay. <clears throat> John. Okay. Let me um, first say that I I have some concerns about developing anything down there that constitutes a lot of traffic. And for the same reasons that I think the people on Curtis Street got upset with the potential of an apartment house down there, that would be the same concerns I would have for um, any major development. And I don't mean open space development, because if it's things like walking trails or bike trails, we're not talking 40 cars coming in. It's athletic fields um, that really draw a constant flow of vehicles. And any Saturday at the Pappas Complex is a clear example, okay? If you haven't been there on Saturday, it's really quite interesting because the, uh, the parking is totally inadequate for what that facility does. And that's just for regular games, soccer and baseball and softball. So that's the concern I have. Um, I agree that we need to do immediate maintenance up there and we need to make sure that this, that we don't lose any value in this property because we're not taking care of it. Um, I think that um, it would be nice to figure out, and I don't know if our um, DPW director can do this, is where would you or how would you access the meadow itself by vehicle? For instance, if we wanted to put a walking trail or a dog park down there, how would you get people in there in the in the most cost effective way okay i mean it's a steep grade mm -hmm. now you know steep grades can be tackled but that concerns me a little bit um and one other thing uh, i got a call last week from selectman Doreen goodrich and she said to me uh, open space could that possibly be used for a cemetery and i said i don't know i will find out Subsequently, I talked to Wayne Bloomquist at the uh, Parks Recreation Cemetery, and he informed me that Hillside is, has an expected, will be full in 20 to 25 years. There's no expansion that's possible there. It's landlocked, and so there is going to be a need within the community at some point. I know this is another thing that's way down the road, but if you think about things way down the road, mm -hmm it might be a way that we could look at, um, maybe if not this property, something else, that we're gonna need a cemetery, period. Um, Hillside Cemetery is approximately 30 acres. It's, when it is full, it will have served the town for approximately 200 years. So wow. it's, it's really pretty impressive. Um, so if you took a, you know, if you made a cemetery that was 10 acres, would it, how long would that last? Would it last 60, 70 years? That might take a burden off the town when that becomes necessary. Again, I don't know if it's appropriate. There are some wetlands down there. There's, you know, obviously the studies and people that know a lot more than I do need to look at it, but that is another possibility. And if you go to the hillside any morning, the number of people that walk through that cemetery is quite impressive. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a, you know it's a it's sort of a 
it's definitely passive, and I, I know I sort of smile every time I say this, cemeteries are passive recreation, but... Um, <laughs> um, John, that's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but but really, it's a great place because there's not Safe. there's no cars going through there. It's it's a it's a much safer thing than walking along Central Street. I would. The think. residents don't bother you. <laughs> well, okay. Real quiet. Um, but you know, I just wanted to throw that out there. And, and otherwise, I'm totally on board with some, you know, the idea of a bike trail. I think it's terrific. I, I used to do a lot of biking, and you just take your life in your hands on on roads. And we really need um, to, to offer our citizens that. And you know, even I, I'm not I don't have anything against a dog park either. I I just need I just feel we need to make sure anything we do like that is maintained, and preferably by the people that use it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or, you know, on a on a big parcel like that, we have I think three Boy Scout troops in town that are always looking for projects and. It, it, to put the word out that if you're looking for an Eagle Scout project, we get a list. Would be just a, a great way to tackle some of that stuff. And that's it. Question is: uh, Is Hillside a cost of the town, or is it a private uh, run thing? It uh, is. It's owned by the town. Okay. So the there, with the with the reconfiguration of, or the, the establishment of the DPW, part of what was absorbed into that was the cemetery department, and that was, you know, a certain number of people. Now, and, and Wayne Bloomquist was the head of that. He is now the head of Parks, Recreation, and Cemetery. So with his crew, not only with an expanded crew, he takes care of that. Okay. You know, the, the monuments under 12, all the, the parks, the cutting the grass at the schools. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty, it's a pretty ambitious department. I don't know if the cemetery was a private. Uh, no, but they do, they do have a, um, uh, a tr I think it's a trust fund that, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's like a perpetual trust when people buy a lot mm -hmm. that goes in there and then they tap into that to pay for certain things. Okay. But I think the personnel come out of the town budget. I don't think that's... Yeah, they have, they have a regular town budget. Yeah. But they do have that perpetual care for it. Right, and that buys their equipment right. and, and improvements and right. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always articles but that Hill, tell me... But Hillside's not the only cemetery in them. Two, are there two other cemeteries? Yeah, but fills are full, aren't they? Well, they are, but... I know, but they, they exist. It's just yes, yeah, yeah, there's, there's the one, one by the one. First, first Congregational Church. Church. And then where's the other? The one down by Wendy's on Route 12. Yeah, corner of uh, Waterman oh, Road. Yeah, that's full. Yeah. That one is full. I, the Congregational Church, that's full? Mm. They, I, I understand that that's why they opened Hillside, was that oh. that was getting full. Or, you know, I'm, this uh, Hillside opened in, in, I think it... It's 1841 or something like that, mm -hmm. so it's it's quite old. Mm -hmm. um, but it was an expansion. As the town grew, you needed more space. Sure. The only thing that concerns me about a cemetery is the water table up there. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'd want to know for sure that. I'm not saying it's not doable, but mm -hmm. I'd want to know. Well, I think that's part of this, this, what we need to figure yes. out is, you know, it, as far as having experts look at the land in there, mm -hmm. and water is a huge concern. Definitely. Definitely. Well, I think we've got a variety of ideas out here on the table already. Um, the next item, well, I, I'll speak for myself here. I, um, I'm not opposed to trails on the property. I myself, you know, I'm hoping we keep some of it open. Mm -hmm. When I say open, I don't mean with an athletic field on it with pavement, I mean open. Um, I'd like to see some of it left for the habitat that's been disturbed up there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we keep hearing more and more about deer and other things in the neighborhoods, and it's because they don't have any place to live. But, um, you know, so I'm not opposed to the, to the trail idea. Um, you know, as you, most of you know, I'm on the Auburn Housing Authority, and I'm only speaking for myself. Um, there's a huge need for additional housing, and as the population continues to age, and as more and more of us approach those age guidelines, um, there's just going to be more and more of a demand for it because of the um, baby boomer generation. So I, you know, I'm interested in developing more elderly housing, maybe not there, but somewhere in the community. So I am interested in looking at that. Um, so I'm not sure about the cemetery. I'm not. The only thing that concerns me at the cemetery is the water table. That's the only thing. So it's just an idea. It's no, no, I mm -hmm. think that's great, and I that's that was. That was the whole point of having a dialogue, is to get some ideas out. And, you know, we've got a lot, 
we've got a lot here to really sort out and, and look at and try to figure out and, and as has been pointed out to us in a pretty short period of time. Um, the selectmen is, you know, we were all at the meeting last week and they're planning another public hearing on June 29th and I believe they're going to advertise it as a hearing and they're going to be publicizing that and um, I had two questions for you. I see our role as a fact-finding role and with that to that end making recommendations to the selectmen. So I guess you know we have been invited to participate with them in a joint meeting at the selectmen's meeting on the 29th. Um, I was thinking before they did that that we would have a public hearing ourselves and invite the residents to come to it but I'm kind of wondering if it's being redundant. I think so yeah. You know but I feel kind of bad because the selectmen are kind of doing our work for us you know. So I wanted to know what you all thought. If you think we should just go to their public hearing and let it lie, or if you think, or maybe after we see what theirs is like, we can decide. You know, because you think, you know, we're scheduled to meet the first and third Mondays. We're not going to have, you know, we met last Monday. We're, now we're meeting tonight, and now we're going to, in two weeks, that's the fifth Monday, isn't it? The 29th, I think, it's the fifth Monday. Um, so then the following Monday, we'd be meeting again. Mm. Um, the first Monday in July, I don't know what the date is, but... Um, do, you know, do you know if the message board at the fire station is up and running? I do one? not know. The new one? I do not know. No, not yet. yet. Not okay. yet. Okay. You know, so somehow you can advertise the public hearing. Well, they, I think there's a standard for that as far as you have to advertise in certain places and, yeah. and certain time beforehand and so forth. Yeah. I think it's two weeks. I'm not, yeah. And no. since the selectmen have advertised it's their meeting, they invited us to join them right. in a joint session. Mm -hmm. They're advertising it, so... Um, Just trying to get the residents. You know, I think, you know, we're going to post it as a, a regular meeting, a joint meeting with the selectmen, I think. Okay. Are, are you all going to come? Yes, mm -hmm. I'll be there. Okay. You'll be here anyways, right? <laughs> so, what, I guess, what are, what are all your feelings about, about it? Do you think we sh what do you think we should do about a public meeting? Personally, I think we should just go with this for now. Okay. And if you know, if, if there is an overwhelming outpouring of support, which I would be totally amazed at, um, then we might need to do another one or make it known that this, this is these are public meetings. People can come here anytime right. and speak out. Absolutely. <clears throat> I, I just think we need to be as open as possible to ideas. Mm -hmm. Mark. What? What do you think about a public hearing, or do you think we should just go with the selectmen's hearing for now? Let's just go with selectmen's. Okay. No. I would agree with that right now. Alex? Yeah, um, combination public hearing with the selectmen. <coughs> so have, go to have the next meeting be a joint meeting with the selectmen on the 29th? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And yeah. then have our next right. meeting be the Monday after that? Right. Yeah. We should spend a little more time, I think, thinking about this extension because I think that has some benefit. Now, are you talking about the one-year extension yeah. or not doing anything for 10 years? Yeah, one-year extension. One-year extension? Yeah, and what, what the liabilities are. I'm going to ask Mr. Kasanovich what the cost is associated with that yeah. because he did say there was a cost. Uh, you know, land's not going to do anything and uh, there's a nominal cost that might be worth uh, you know, our time to uh, put it off for a year <clears throat> or, you know, spend more time um, looking into it. I mean, if there's a big outpouring of public interest and on the 29th, it might indicate that maybe some more time should be spent uh, thinking about this. Well, you know, given, given the um, number of people that were at every session of the selectmen's the hearings, it was packed. Mm. There was like 100 people at every meeting. You know, so, I mean, if, if the selectmen get that kind of a response at their meeting, then, you know, I think we've got, <laughs> we've got even more to consider, but... Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, question is, is um, Post going to be hating that, that field, or what's he going to actually do? He's just going to cut he's and He's not involved or? in it at all. I thought he was going to maintain it. No, we have to maintain it. Okay. That's why we were talking earlier about the fact okay. that he always mowed it twice a year. It okay. would have already been cut by now, two months ago. Okay. So, that's why we're concerned about maintenance but so all right so the consensus of the committee is you want to have the joint meeting with the selectmen on the 29th and schedule a meeting for the fall the first monday in july okay can you um take care of the posting costs for those 
Sure. Okay. I'll need an agenda to post. Okay. So we can work that out, I guess. Yes, we can do that. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, this this um, Matt put on the agenda winter meeting schedule. Um, he wrote on he's got on the front here that you know we'll meet on the first and third Mondays, except for November and December when we're just going to meet on the first Mondays. Um, I don't know that we need to decide that right now. You know. I think that if you if we get to a point where <laughs> we're we're not doing much, then we start to space it out. But I think right. for a little while anyway, we're going to be pretty busy. busy. Right, for a little while we're going to be very busy with South Old, but don't forget, there's, there's all, other, stuff, other yeah. property. We've got to get there's a listing, color. actually, of all the open space in the community. I don't have one anymore, but... Um, it's in the plan. And it's also, in the open space plan. The well, open space plan, while, while it's in draft form, um, you know, there are comments that we receive from the state. It might be good to take a look at the mm -hmm. comments. Um, because we have conditional approval. You do. But we can't apply for grants or anything like that with conditional approval. We have to um, make full and get full approval. And then, you know, the committee did develop a seven-year plan. So there's, you know, goals and right. action mm -hmm. items. And maybe some of those would be conversation for future meetings as well. Is there a, um, is there a time frame on how long you have to respond to the state? There's not. Essentially... It's approved for, so it's a seven year plan, essentially. So the plan is set into effect upon conditional approval, but we can't seek the funding that the plan, like having the plan in state, basically um, we can't seek that funding until it's fully approved. So, so you're kind of stuck. Yeah, I mean, there are some things I think that are, are probably just town program, you know, or, or goals that maybe we don't necessarily need to seek outside funding for. Um, just need to be brought to the attention of the appropriate departments. Um, do you have a map of what's open space? What? We do. Mm -hmm. In the town? Yeah, we have the map shows um, town owned land, shows you know, conservation lands, um, and then the 61A properties, obviously. Um, How many of those? Is there a lot out there? The 61A? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't remember off the top of my head. There's a good handful, and mm -hmm. off of, um, I believe it's Prospects. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. Kelly Farm. It's a huge Kelly one. Farm mm -hmm. is, it's a huge one, too, yeah. Yeah. It's still, I think that's the largest. I think so. Um, grouping Single. of lands yeah. in under protection. All right, so um, we're down to item six. Is there any further public comment on the substance of this meeting here tonight? Yes, sir. Still Chuck Miller, still live at 34 Arlington. You still do, huh? I haven't moved in the past hour. Uh, a couple of things that were said that I, that I wanted to comment on, uh, and I am no civil engineer. But it was regarding a cemetery, I know when we went to put an in-ground pool in our backyard, because that Packachalk Hill is ledge, mm -hmm. they told us we were going to have to dynamite parts of the backyard to, mm -hmm. so I, and I'm no engineer, so just keep that in mind regarding that. The other thing I was thinking about when you mentioned senior housing, I'm certainly not against senior housing, but with the two schools coming available, I thought that would be a good spot because on Curtis Street, if you've ever been down there, you are never going to get an emergency service vehicle in there without serious infrastructure work to the right. street, I think. And then lastly, and John said something that triggered something that I thought, I belong to an organization called uh, Trail Link. And what that is, is a essentially a rail trail biking organization. And they provide guidelines for creating trails and, and stuff like that. But more importantly, belong to a number of friends of such and such a trail where I pay a nominal fee and I help maintain the trails that mm -hmm. I use. Uh, one I'm riding Wednesday night after work where they go and they brush cut and, and all that stuff mm -hmm. to keep it. So the, the people who actually use the trails pay for the maintenance of the trails at a, at a nominal fee of like 20 bucks a year or something like that. So that is a possibility and the Trail Link organization could provide any kind of guideline we make need a request for not only biking trails but they do a trail's a trail right so okay. 
Thanks. Okay. Where, uh, where, where, are the, where are the trails that you go? Uh, there's one, there's a beautiful one in, well, I don't want to tell because then everybody will come. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's some nice ones in Rhode Island. There's a beautiful one in Chelmsford okay. that goes to Carlisle. So it's, it's nice. And there's a lot in Western Mass, believe it or not. Typically, it's all old railroad uh, tracks that yeah. are no longer used when yeah. they've ripped up the tracks. We have some of those here in yes. Auburn. Two old railway, old railway beds. Yes. Or trolley car tracks or whatever. Now, some of that now out in West Auburn, that's becoming the new cross country trails yeah. you know, for, the high, for the high school, middle school. So. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, they've uh, that parcel on, along uh, the um, Blake you know, Street. Well, it's one of the reservoirs, right? I think Tinker Hill yep. and then all the way back to uh, West Street. Um, I, I haven't seen the specific plan, but that they are taking advantage of some of that. And if I may, there is a uh, nice trail off of 146 in Worcester, which would not be by kind of by Walmart. It's a, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. small. It goes to basically from Walmart to that shopping center up on the hill. But it would be nice if we could somehow link up with that through the South Hill Road property. Or even got this recreation area. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Okay. Anyone else? All right, so I guess we pretty much decided on our next couple of meetings, Dave. The 29th. I'm sorry, did you have something or did I just no, start? Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so the next meeting will be on the 29th. It'll be a joint meeting with the board of selectmen across the hall, 7:05, and then our next meeting will be whatever the Monday is after that. Um, July 7th, it looks like. July 7th, okay. And is seven a good time? Do we want to do earlier? I like seven myself. Anytime. Anytime, really. Yeah. Gives people an opportunity to get home. All right, so we'll stick with seven. Are you are with that? We'll try and we met with Jack by then? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. He won't be back for the 29th, though, I don't think. I don't believe so. Okay. All right, then. So is there anything else from anyone at this time? Okay, we've got a lot to think about, so. Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, July seventh, yeah. the Monday at flight. I have it. Not moving. I'm thinking July seventh. I'm sorry, July sixth. July sixth. Yeah, okay. okay. July sixth is the Monday. So it's July sixth, seven o'clock here. Matt will be back for the twenty ninth. He will be. You okay. will. Mm -hmm. All right then. All right. So, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thank you all very much, and thank you all in the audience.